So now to this E minor chord. Let's talk about minor chords a little bit. Minor chords sound different than major chords. And part of what we need to do, even in these beginning stages, is get your ear trained to know the difference. If your ear is not trained to know the difference, if you look at the page and you play it wrong and you make a mistake, you're never going to know. Your ear has to be informed. So, this is an E major chord. This is an E minor. One sounds, some would say, bright. Some would say dark. Some would say happy. Some would say sad. My wife says somber. Now, when you're thinking of chords, you're listening to the color of the sound. That's what I'm talking about. Happy, sad. But you also need to know that chords are made up of notes that you can stack in different ways. Now, I don't expect you to fully understand this at this point, but I want you to know that when you talk about an E minor 7 chord, you're talking about these notes, E, G, B, and D, however you choose to stack them. So if I play it this way, where this is E, B, D, or, yeah, E, B, D, G, this is an E minor chord, E minor 7. That's it. There it is. Now, remember the notes are E, G, B, and D. Well, my next string is a B. My next string is an E, so I could just play this. It sounds great. Or, instead of playing it this way, I could play this note. This note right here is a D. So I could play my E minor 7 this way. It sounds different. Or I could play it this way. I'm stacking the notes a different way. One of the great things about guitar is you have a lot of freedom as to how you play chords. One of the confusing things for beginners is you have a lot of freedom as to how you play chords. So we're going to learn these and we're going to get started, get you to the point that you can play some songs that you recognize. And then we're going to go back and we're going to learn some alternate ways to play these chords. So for now, this is what we're doing. I'm telling you this because I know we've got a lot of people in this class that have a propensity to go searching on YouTube. And you're going to hear somebody tell you, no, that's wrong. The only way to play an E minor 7 is this way. That's wrong. That's not the only way to play an E minor 7. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. Not that anyone in this class should be skinning cats. And there's more than one way to play an E minor chord. For the purposes of this class, I want you playing it two ways. You'll play an E minor this way that you learned last week, first and second, second and third fingers, or you're going to learn this new way. This E minor 7 is built very similar to the G and the C that you just learned. You're going to take your third and fourth fingers, again, on the third fret of the first and second string. Clearly see that. Just like last time, remember, not a lot of space there. I can hold the pick there. They're all up against each other. Now you're going to come up here to the fourth and fifth string on the second fret. And what you'll notice is I'm feeling around for where that fret is. Notice right here on my second finger. I'm feeling for it because I want to be close to it. And then I want to come in with this finger. Now, just like I said earlier, you want to keep these fingertips close. You want to keep these fingertips close. Whenever you're playing these chords where you've got one finger literally sitting right on top of each other, they can't sit perfectly side by side unless you've got super, super small hands. And if your hands are that small, give it a few years and you'll grow and they will no longer be that small. You need to turn them sideways like that. So this is the sound of this new E minor chord with the fourth finger on the first string, third fret third finger on the second string, third fret, second finger on the fourth string, second fret, right where it was in the previous E minor, and then first finger on the fifth string, 
second fret. And you're going to get all six strings in this chord. There's none to avoid, so you can be a little sloppy with your wrist if you want to. And let's take a time and go one note at a time through the chord. It's a very open sounding chord. Acoustic guitars love open, ringing, low notes. There it is. So that is your E minor 7 for this week. So let's take this, and now let's move to another chord once we've got that down. We're just going to kind of strum on it a little bit, and we're going to make the jump to the G chord. Now think about what you're getting ready to do. Everything's going to stay in place except your second finger is going to move from where it is up to the sixth string right there on the third fret, right where the little dot is that you're looking at right now trying to figure out where it is. Set it right on top of that dot. Ready? Here we go. We're going to make the change. Move that finger up, and there's your G. Now you'll notice when you did that, that your hand naturally made an accommodation and your first finger slid forward just a little bit. If it didn't, you're kind of contorted right now and it's super, super uncomfortable. So if your finger is still way back here like this, go ahead and slide it forward. Not like that. Like that right there. That's it. Bring it back into place. Now we're going to go back to that E minor. And remember, in order to get that second finger where it needs to go, you're going to have to slide the first finger back just a hair. Okay, so we're moving our first finger off of the sixth string. We're moving it to the fourth string on the second fret. You got it in your head? Is it visualized? All right, here we go. Make the change. Ready? Now, make the change. That's it. Now we're going to go back to the G. Remember what we're doing with that first finger. It's got to slide forward. The second finger makes the jump. On this next strum, here we go. Make the jump. That's it. All right. Now, we're going to stop right there because I need to give you time to relax your hand. You're probably a little tense in the thumb right now because this is the most pressure that we've put on the thumb because we've involved four fingers. If your thumb is hurting anywhere, fleshy part, this little joint right here, this joint right here, stop, take a break, come back, and we'll pick up right where we left off.